Greetings, shippers. Welcome back. And are you ready for some more Voltron? I assume so, because you saw the title before you clicked on this. Now, we've talked about Voltron a ton on this channel, and just recently, at the time of this recording at least, we did a Clance update following Season 5, so click the card if you're interested, or I'll put the link down below. But now it's time to examine another ship that is currently exploding, but actually isn't as new or novel as some fans believe. It's time to examine Lotura, the pairing of Princess Allura and Prince Lotor. Following Season 5 of Voltron, Ultron Legendary Defender, enthusiasm and attention on this pairing has skyrocketed. However, for fans of both iterations of Voltron, both classic and the newer one, this pairing is hardly a surprise. Or at least it shouldn't be. Because Lotura indeed has an intriguing history that spans far beyond this iteration of the show. And it actually highlights something that this modern adaptation doesn't often get credit for. That being updating while honoring the original Voltron, paying reference to, homage, and in some cases correcting. And by original, we mean the American version, because Voltron was actually cobbled together based off of two separate anime. So as you can imagine, we've got a lot to cover, so let's just get started. Before we get started, since season 5 aired so recently at the time of this recording, I will issue a spoiler alert. It'll be a while before we actually hit any auditory spoilers in this video, but there may be some pictorial ones, so if you don't like anything even vaguely spoilerish, it's probably best to get out now. Following season 5, many fans have been pleasantly surprised by the turn that Latura has made towards becoming a canon ship. Indeed, much groundwork has been laid that is fully tangible, reaching outside of subtext into easily chartable moments. From hand-holding to oblique marriage proposals to declarations of needing each other and providing emotional support, this ship is clearly on its way in some direction within canon, and this has many shippers excited, even if some are wary that this ship may not go the way some expect. To examine why, let's go back to the first time Latura was presented in Voltron, that being in Voltron Defender of the Universe, airing originally from 1984 to 1985. Princess Allura and Prince Lotor were popular characters during the series, just as they are now, and in the 1980s run, their relationship was a key part of Lotor's character and villainous machinations. While modern Lotor has vestiges of his original characterization, in Legendary Defender he is far less cartoonishly evil, and his literal harem has been transformed into an all-lady strike force. Originally, Lotor became besotted with Allura on sight, and she became the focus of his obsession, a mixture of love, lust, and a need for control. An obsession that rose to the point where he could no longer even destroy pictures of her. He sought Allura as his bride, wanting to unite their people, but mostly wanting her for himself. However, Allura was not receptive because of Lotor's nefarious and cruel nature that renders him largely irredeemable, even to someone as sympathetic as Allura, so any kind feelings that do emerge are quickly quashed. This led to many a kidnap plot, as well as an intense rivalry with Allura's chosen love interest, Keith. Incidentally, classic canon Kalura is part of why certain modern shippers hold out hope for these two, as well as some of the quiet moments the two have shared in Legendary Defender. Back with classic Latura, with Lotor doing things such such as taking up with Allura's cousin Rommel. In part because of their similarity in appearance, Lotura in the classic verse is a dark and often doomed ship, full of angst, one-sided pining, and a dark Romeo and Juliet aspect. Which is not to say that some shippers didn't produce fixits or long for a redemption for Lotor, but Lotor was a lot rougher around the edges. Indeed, at times he was downright abusive, a character trait many fans are happy to see left in the past. While not a large ship, it did have firm supporters drawn to its complexity and darker themes. And the legacy of that relationship has been acknowledged in Legendary Defender, although these two's relationship within this series is markedly different. Some shippers even find an appeal in examining the differences between Latour of the past and the Latour of now, trying to chart why exactly certain decisions were made. So I'll put it to you, early question, is this update a welcome one? If you're someone who is familiar with both versions, do you like this change? Now as noted, there are some who are shipping since Season 3 of Legendary Defender, even without knowledge of this prior history, drawn to the intensity present when Lotor pursues Allura and examining the connection between their fathers, as well as simply longing for the two to meet to see how they would interact, and concocting their own narratives for how this would go, similar to how backstories and plots were explored for Lancelot shippers or Keytor shippers within Fanon. However, this ship truly exploded with Season 5, and now it is necessary to give a spoiler alert, for in order to discuss these two situations, there will be some spoilers, so please, if you don't want to be spoiled, Leave now. After Lotor surrenders himself to the Paladins to help bring down his father's empire and hopefully seize control of it, he is put in frequent and direct contact with Allura, and the season largely focuses on her coming to trust him and his growth as a character regarding whether or not he is someone who can in fact be trusted. Lotor's desire to wed Allura is made reference to in his bid to have them merge their empires, a subtle but clear reference to marriage, something that both the original and this Allura are wary of. However, this update rectifies a change made in Defender of the Universe and that it restores Lotor 
Satori's dual parentage, as in the original series, those references from the Golan anime were ignored, and the footage of Lotor's mother was used as additional Allura footage instead, and he was given complete dual ancestry. This return to his shared lineage adds a new layer to his character, and instantly increases Allura's interest in and sympathy towards him. It is clear that Allura wants to believe the best in Lotor, and he has encouraged her to believe in herself and reach heights he previously did not know she could. Personality-wise, the two are a good match. Both share a keen resolve and vision as to what they want for their people. They are both eager to learn about their histories from which they have been cut off. While Lotor is angry with his father and his people's atrocities, Allura is more contemplative, and though she does harbor resentment, has been shown to be able to forgive. Her more sacrificial point of view versus Lotor's aggressive one could help balance him out, just as he pushes her. The sadness both feel about the past could conceivably be appeased if the two move towards a brighter future righting the wrongs done together. They view each other as equals and can talk to one another, and both have expressed concern for the other's emotional well-being, beyond what the situation called for or what some would expect given their histories. On top of this, fans feel there is an intensity between them, a passion that at times feels more adult than some of the other ships that some are eager to explore. Lotor's capture has given rise to some great fix exploring this, and the art has been amazing in general. Side note, some just note the similarities between his prison and Loki's. That would be a good fic, recreating that scene between Loki and Black Widow, but with Lotor and Allura? I'd watch it. Side note over. The two have also been subject to many AUs, some merging old canon plot lines, others examining worlds where the two knew each other as children, others filling in scenes as Allura teaches Lotor about his Altaian heritage, something out of reach for him before, but not something he is ashamed of. Instead, he embraces it, much to Allura's pleasure. The two, aside from both being royalty, are both literally chosen, or of the chosen class, to be able to enter a certain sacred location. For many shippers, this put them over the edge. And of course, one cannot forget the lovers of fluff and people who just imagine the two would have a good time together. However, it is not all sunshine and roses for this ship, even if there are of course those writing dark fix and angst for it who do fully support this ship. While this version of Lotura is certainly much healthier than the one that came before, some fear it is too soon to become attached. Some do not trust Lotor, fearing all this is a ploy, that Allura is being used, and that the Emperor can simply not be trusted. That is hair of evil. Just look at Kylo Ren. Some feel Allura's interest in him is not romantic, but instead pity, or worse yet, fueled by desire to be near any Altaian, yearning for some connection with her people, in a sense being drawn to his genetics, but not him. Others find the potential pairing perplexing given Allura's reaction to Keith, upon discovering that he himself was half Galra, and indeed just based on her attitude towards the Galra in general. Even if she is working with them, she may still harbor some deep-seated bias. Justified or not, some feel that that is not the best foundation for a relationship. There are other Others who feel the whole relationship felt rushed, from enemies to potentially more in six episodes, less even if you only count the ones that focus on them. However, others counter that this is typical of Voltron's pacing, love it or hate it, when it comes to all plot points. That being things will advance, be dropped, then advance again. Alternatively, a character will undergo a burst of character development and then be moved aside for others to do so. So this pace is not atypical, though that fact does not mean it has to make that pairing enjoyable for those who prefer more development. This pacing issue often means that people feel events are either rushed or involved in some Machiavellian plotting, such as Clance being an extremely slow burn, and they will mock fans who feel it could simply be a different style of storytelling, or that the plots are not quite as tightly knit together as some believe, either of which may be true. Time will tell with all of the show's plot lines as well as ships. It is also important to remember that many shippers do not have a vested interest in their ship becoming canon, or are willing to accept where canon takes them if their ship already is canon. However, it must also be noted, lots of notes, that none of us truly know where a show will go until it goes goes there. Until that point, it is all theories, even if some seem more likely or more desirable than others. So it is really unproductive to attack other fans for not being on board with exactly the same headcanons, as some will not accept anything without canon approval, and others have other headcanons and interests of their own. Also, some are more in tune with certain cues than others, and that's absolutely fine as well. So it remains, and for some Lotura shippers, they will stick with this ship even if Lotor reveals himself to be untrustworthy, a possibility as he was unable to receive knowledge from the temple due to his aggressive leanings. Still, some enjoy a dark ship, or the angst this potential separation would cause, and if people were to prefer the friendly route it seems to be taking, there are at least always AUs and fixits. Of course, there are also those who ship other ships as well. However, Kalura, Shalura, Kitor, Lancelot, and others appear to be adjusting relatively well to each other's existence comparatively. For Lotura, this is its boom, as certain ships have moments that catapult them into popularity, and for this ship, even though it has existed for decades, this is its moment, with fan vids, 
science, theories, fix, art, and more all exploding. It has a lot to offer and much to explore, thanks to involving two complex characters with a lot more stories to tell and a lot more growing to do. The potential to expand the universe by having these two explore their lost history together is appealing to many. Indeed, executive producers have promised much more is coming, for Lure especially although mileage varies as to how much people listen to executive producers when it comes to this series. <laughs> Your little baby feet. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Are you guys Lotura shippers, or does some other Lotor pairing catch your fancy, or do you just not trust him? No shipping for him because he's untrustworthy. How many of you guys were also fans of the original Voltron? Let me know down below. Answer all of the million questions as best you can because you know I love reading all of the comments, all of your answers. It's so much fun. Honestly, it's fun to see more ships in Voltron gaining some prominence outside of the main two. In general, just seeing how this new Voltron is evolving is fascinating to me. Thanks as always for spending some time shipping with me. It's been a blast. There are so many more vids and ships to come, so please subscribe and hit that bell notification button so you never miss a video. I'll see you all soon. Now let's get to that outro. Bye-bye. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm off to look at some Lotor fan art, and I have to say a special thanks to all of my patrons' names on the side for helping make all of these videos possible. There is much more to come, so as always, stay tuned, for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.